project you helped me to show, show you uh, movements. Like, I want to talk about the linkage between uh, uh, movement and uh, dignity. Um, and I want to, uh, to try to uh, achieve two goals. Uh, the, the first is to be aware to uh, non-verbal communication that get, that we get and that we give. And yesterday Donna was touched it in a very interesting way for us. Uh, the second is to understand the, uh, the influence of uh, non-verbal communication on uh, uh, dignity and indignity. The, it's unconscious, un, uh, uh, this, uh, this communication, and, uh, but it's still a uh, big uh, influence on us. So, um, for this, I want you uh, to move with me, and you will help me. So, we have all of us to go outside and to make a circle, please.
I'm not uh, really a graceful or a playful person. So this exercise today made me realize that I should try to be more comfortable in expressing myself, in expressing the inner child in me. Yeah, I think yeah, this made me realize that that is really important. The fourth exercise was quite difficult because not. So I want to talk about the last exercise. Um, Monica, let me, when I close my eyes, I really closed my eyes, it was not easy. I mean, I had to trust her that I, I would not fall. I don't see anything, I was blind, totally blind. And I had to trust her that she will, she will meet me and she will take me, that I will be good, in good hands, and nothing will happen to me, and it wasn't very easy. Sometimes we do it, you know, in groups, when we even ask like a group of six people to create a circle, and one person just stand in the middle, he has to close his eyes and to fall down on his bed and to be sure to trust. It's a question of trust. To trust that the group will hold him and will not let him fall. And um, it's not easy, it's an experience. After having a good food, I thought I would sleep in the between like children and I would feel boring. But uh, you know, this exercise made me awake, I feel energetic. And, uh, and I feel that this side of exercise gives some type of happiness without listening to any music or something. The music, of course, is there, but if we do something, find us also, we feel uh, energetic and we can do something more. And more with the company of young young people like you, more energetic, you have uh, good gestures uh, to do. I feel that uh, I am in the child. <laughs> so, but for staying in there, thank you for staying in there. I will follow this somewhere also. <laughs> thank you. There is a child forever in every one of us and we have to, to uh, uh, protect this child because from there there is the happiness, the creativity yes. and even love. Okay. Uh, the IV is like a meditation, it's like a yoga. Uh, I prefer to yoga also. That's why after the launch this yoga is very benefited for us. <laughs> I mean, with the uh, Saji Sarki and the digital, when you feel this very busyness, it makes an energy, it gives energy with love and passion to all of us. Um, mine actually is, is kind of a suggestion for the next exercise that we don't have time for. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I work with, with deaf people in sign language. Uh, and also with interpreters. And within the deaf community, there, there are people who have other disabilities as well as deafness. And so you have deaf blind people. Uh, and so in training uh, interpreters how to interact, um, the last exercise, the, the person with the sight was leading the blind person. And the typical way, if you don't have the experience, you see a blind person, okay, you're blind. I see you want to cross the street, so I grab them and pull them across the street. <laughs> and the blind person is like, what's happening? <laughs> so, so the next exercise is actually to do exactly the same thing. One person closes their eyes, the other person's eyes open, but the person with the eyes closed. And that, you have to be really in sync because the other person is the one that sees where you're going, where you're going to bump into things. Yes. But it's still the person with the eyes closed that makes the decision of where we go. And, and you really have to build that, not just trust, but connection. 
so that you can feel a slight, the slightest hint of a, oh, okay, we're turning left now. Uh, and then, of course, when you have deafblind people, then, then it's like, okay, they can't, I can't talk to them, you know. And so you have your own form of communication where you're using tactile sign. But the connection there with, with, the, with the same person leading is, is a very good step. But just imagine, the person who can't see is the leader. The blind person is the one that wants to go across the street. And maybe actually they're just standing there. They don't want to go across the street. If you pull them across, the street, and he's like, what? <laughs> so you have to let them make the decision. You have to put them. They're in the position of power. Okay. And so the next maybe exercise you might want to think about developing is do the same thing. And the next one, have, have the person with their eyes closed lead the dance. They are friends because the way they move together and the way they believe each other, in each other, I knew that they are friends. You, you, you understand me? <laughs> 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 and, and another thing that I'm thinking about it now about the whole exercises is a question of. Control and being controlled by others. I think that we had an experience of controlling the situations. We could be, we could decide which movement we do, and the whole group would follow us. And there were other situations by which we were controlled by others. And I think that's life. I mean, in, in real life, sometimes we can control, and some other times. We are controlled by situations, by other people, by circumstances, anything. So uh, I could say that I could feel well, I could feel fine in both situations. I love to control, I must say, it gives me a good feeling. But I could also live well with a feeling of being controlled by others, trusting others, letting others decide what should happen or what should not happen. So this is a kind of, you know, of a, a, a workshop or a, a, a laboratory of, of real life. Okay, I'll go. My, uh, I have two learners. The one is only my view and second is the learning. Uh, as you said that you uh, gathered that uh, the playful side of yours came out so you realize that you should uh, try, uh, you know, opening yourself more and <coughs> try becoming more, more playful, kiddish rather. Eh? So I actually thought that uh, I just did what I keep doing the whole day. <laughs> so I am um, really blessed that um, you know, both the sides are blessed with the family, even before marriage and even after marriage. A very playful families I have. Second thing, uh, I go with Ami, that the trust building fact, see, uh, even in SARS uh, session, we uh, gathered that somehow the trust of a particular segment still misses in the other. You know, maybe SC, SC is missing in general or in the government or we people lose, uh, you know, losing the trust in the government and its policies or whatever may be the scene. But trust, see, I am, I am that trust and the person who is I am building will certainly take care of me. Uh, but how about in Indian marriages? You know, we give ourselves... Hear me. Yes, yes. Feel me. Yes. Understand me. Yes, yes. So that kind of, you know, uh, feeling, understanding and building up trust, that is very important. And I learned, trust me, I, on the, in the seventh year of my marriage, I actually learned uh, that it is very important to have the trust and faith in your partner. Up to that time, still my past since, you know, uh, things were... Uh, having the, the impact on me, but then I gathered that uh, the moment I changed myself and I developed more trust onto him, he overnight changed. So that is very important. That is what I learned from this. I, I really appreciate this. Thank you. And I, I, we can talk about it in, uh, for many kinds of view, but I want to. Uh, look at what we are talking here. So I gave it to you to feel by your body and movement the, un the unverbal communication which is always, always, always exists even now. 
it exists. And uh, it's most of the time unconscious, but it's very, very influenced. And I want to give you three notions about it, and then I'll finish to speak. Uh, the three notions are synchronization, feeling are in the body, and uh, term is theory of mind. I will talk very uh, short. So, transformation. Transformation is the process of precising, coordinating, or matching two or more activities, devices, or processes in time. Uh, examples: mother and the child, father and the baby, and mother and the baby. Couples with a good mood. <laughs> a orchestra, classical orchestra or jazz orchestra. Everything, no? They have to be together. They have to find. Um, even a basketball team or a football team where people are together and doing things together, there must be synchronization to fulfill their um, goals. Okay. Uh, this is synchronization and I want to tell you that this is the basis for many, many uh, uh, abilities in the human being. It is the basis of achieving language, ability to feel empathy, uh, self-regulation, to use symbols, uh, to uh, uh, the ability to feel close and to make close uh, interaction, to echo other person, and, and even the hormone of love, oxytocin, is interfere in this uh, in this uh, interaction with uh, synchronization. Um, so every uh, interaction with synchronization is dignified. Okay? The other um, notion is about the idea that the feelings are in our uh, body. Um, brain research uh, points out that our knowledge about feelings is coming from the body. And even the language and uh, reveals it. So I feel high, I feel down. Uh, it breaks my heart. Uh, I am drowning in, in his high eyes. Do you know another uh, in the language that you can feel the the body inside? In the language, are you with me? Butterflies. When, when we are tense, when we are afraid, or a, a kind of an anxiety, you say, I have butterflies in my stomach. I don't know if it's... Children um, don't know how to uh, explain their feelings, so they, they explain it by, uh, by physics, by, by stomach pain, headaches, but it's most of the time it's a way of uh, give the place to their feelings. The last last uh, notion is the theory of mind and it's the idea of our mental ability is the ability to attribute mental states, beliefs, uh, intents, desires, uh, present knowledge, etc., in ourselves and in, in others. 
uh, autistic people uh, don't have this ability. People under alcohol don't have this. So it's very, very important, and we call it theory of mind, that I understand without words the intent, the beliefs, the feelings of other people. Thank you.